So now that you guys are all experts at finding derivatives, we're going to start talking about antiderivatives. So first of all, let's just do a simple, really simple derivative, and basically we'll go from there. So if we have, um, let's say f of x is equal to x squared, then f prime at x, f prime, f prime at x, there we go, we know, well, that's just going to be um, 2x. Right, and how did we get that? We said, well, if f of x was here, if we have x to the n, then the derivative is going to be n times x to the n minus 1. Okay, that's not so bad. So we already knew that, right? This was from the whole derivative section and the power videos, or the power rule videos and all that stuff. That's just simple derivatives. So the antiderivative basically is we're just going to go backwards. Um, we're going to start with a 2x, and we're going to find what we had to differentiate to get that. So if we do that, we'll say now we have f at x is equal to 2x. And we want to find what we had to differentiate to get that. Um, basically, if this, we're kind of assuming this is f prime at x, and we're finding what the original f at x was. Um, the other way we can write this is sometimes the capital F, um, f prime x. So we want to find, this is called the antiderivative. So if we're looking at this, we know that when we differentiate, uh, if something has an exponent, uh, that exponent is going to be, the derivative is going to be uh, to one degree less than the original function. So if we look at this here, we know that this has an exponent of one, and it's one degree less than the original function, or its antiderivative. So we know that just by kind of doing this backwards, we're going to have to have this, the exponent is going to be n plus one. So this will be, we're going to have x, and then we're going to raise the exponent to from 1 to 2. And we're just going to stop here and look at this and say, okay, well now if we have x squared, if we differentiate this, we're going to get 2x to the power of 1. And there we go, 2x to the power of 1. So we did it right. So that's good. But now think about this. What if we actually had, so if we differentiated x squared, we're going to get 2x. What if we differentiated um, what if we had x squared, x squared plus 1, right? When we differentiate this, we're going to get, um, well, let's differentiate it this way. Uh, we'll get 2x plus 0. So here we go. And now we have a problem. We're saying if we differentiate x squared, we get 2x. If we differentiate x squared plus 1, we get 2x. So if we have, a, if we have this here, 2x and we're trying to find the antiderivative, we have to account for, you know, this could have plus 1, this could have plus 10, if it's plus some constant. Uh, we don't know what that constant is. So up, we'll go up here, and when you do antiderivatives, always include plus c, because it could always have plus some number that we're not finding over here, because it just comes out to plus or minus 0. Now the way this is written in the textbook, um, if, you're wanna, if you want to solve for an antiderivative, it's written as an indefinite or an integral. It looks like this, uh, f at x uh, dx is equal to, and then we used uh, the capital F, so we'll continue that notation, fx plus c. And this works um, if, you say like this, if and only if, and if with two f's, if um, f prime at x, capital F prime at x is equal to f at x. And that's just saying, basically, we're just taking the derivative in reverse. We're doing an antiderivative. Um, so if the derivative of capital F at x is equal to F at x, we did it right. And just include the C always. So let's do another example. Let's do some more. Um, let's solve for, well, if we write it in this notation here, we'll do this. We'll write this one um, just out in a new notation like this. Uh, so this would be, um, for example, written like this, x squared dx is equal to 2x plus c. So that's how we would write this one. So let's do more examples. Let's do some that we haven't seen yet. Um, let's come down here. Let's solve for, um, how about x cubed? x cubed uh, dx. Uh, now when we take the antiderivative of this, uh, let's look at this. We're going to have to raise the power by 1. So it's going to be x to the power of 4. So now let's take a second and 
if we take the, if we have this uh, if we differentiate x to the power of four we're going to bring down the four here um, and so yeah, let's just do it over here we would get four x to the power of three and that's not what we have we have x to the power of three so we're going to have to think about this for a little while if we just multiplied this by a constant um, times one quarter for example then these are going to cancel out and we'll be left with x cubed. So that's perfect. That's what we want to do. Let's cancel that out. So like that. Uh, one quarter times x to the fourth. And this is the same. Like when you're differentiating, this is the scalar rule. We can just pull this out, differentiate, and put it back in. And so that's our answer. And then this is also, sorry, this is plus, plus c. Okay, let's do some more power rule examples. Uh, if we want to differentiate, uh, let's say, what if we had... What if we had 2x to the power of 4 um, dx? So we're going to raise the, uh, raise the power by 1. So we'll have x to the fifth. And now let's go over here in a little thought bubble. So what are we going to have to do? We're going to, when we differentiate this, this is the way to check now. Uh, we'll have 5x to the fourth. Um, but we want 2x to the fourth. So we'll have to multiply this by uh, two fifths. And then the fives would cancel out and we would be left with two x to the four. So again, this is just a thought bubble, so we'll cross that out and we will have times two fifths uh, times x to the power of five. And that is our antiderivative plus c, always plus c, right? All right, let's do a few more down here, some more power rule examples. I'll make a few more videos. I think we'll go through some all the different types, we'll do chain rule and uh, addition rule and all that stuff. So what if we had, um, let's say, we want the antiderivative of x to the negative one half. Well, this is going to be uh, dx. This is going to be equal to, think about this, we'll raise this by one. So we'll have x to the power of one half. And so now, over here in your thought bubble and so when we bring this down to check and see how close we are we'll get one half times x to the negative one half um, and we have to get rid of this one half here because it's not uh, in the original it's not our, in our f of x so all we have to do is multiply this by two those cancel out and we get x to the power of negative one half so again cross that out and we get times two 2 times x to the power of 1 half, or 2 root x, uh, plus c. And that's our antiderivative. So these actually are pretty simple. Once you get the hang of it, um, it's kind of a guessing process a little bit. Um, and that's what I'm just going to be teaching you guys, is just how to guess antiderivatives. Uh, so you can do them really quickly and not worry about it at all. Let's do one more example. we got space for one more, maybe two. Um, let's say we had, we want the antiderivative of, hmm, what do we have here? Let's say 3x squared plus uh, 2x, okay, dx. Um, now, so this is, we're going to have to use the addition rule, so we'll look at these individually. So 3x squared, um, we're going to raise the power by 1, so we'll have, let's see, we'll have x cubed. Now when we bring this, We'll bring this down to check. To, we're going to try and differentiate this and see if we get this part. So 3x squared. So that part's okay. And now we'll add the next part. Uh, we're going to differentiate this. We're going to raise this, or take the antiderivative. Sorry, we'll raise this to the power of 2. So that has to be x squared. And we pull the 2 down. Um, we'll get 2x to the power of 1. So that's actually okay too. Uh, and then we'll also we'll add c because there could be a constant here. We're not sure. And this is our antiderivative. So let's do one more, I guess. We can fit another one down here. Um, let's take the antiderivative of mm, 1 half um, x cubed. Why not? Okay, dx. So we're going to raise the power of, of x by 1, so we'll have x to the power of 4. And now let's just... Um, uh, let's go over here and think about this for a second. When we differentiate x to the power of 4, we're going to get 4x to 
to the power of 3. So we have 4, but we want to get a half. So we're going to have to divide this all by 8, or multiply it by 1 8th, right? Because these will cancel out, and we'll be left with a 2. Oh, sorry, I mean, we'll be left with a 2 on the bottom. <laughs> That's exactly what we want. Uh, so we'll multiply this by, we can say 1 8th, or divide it by 8. Uh, it means the same thing. And then plus C. So there you go. That's uh, that's a couple power rule um, examples of how to guess antiderivatives. And join me in the next video, and we'll look at a few other rules.